Hey everybody, it's Rob with High Five. I'm here with my co-host, Cam Davis, and our special guest co-host, Jim Johnson, who is also co-founder of First Fridays. And we have a special guest with us here today, Mark Robison with Brotherhood Mutual. Mark, how are you doing today? Pretty well, thank you. Awesome. It's great to have you. I know you've been going through a lot, and hopefully some of these questions will tap into uh, some of what you've been able to work through and navigate uh, in these interesting times we've had. So I'm going to turn it over to uh, Jim is going to do our first question. So Jim, go ahead, brother. All right. Thank you. Yeah, looking forward to hearing uh, your responses to this, Mark. You know, driving by Brotherhood um, quite often during the week, see that there's a lot of growth happening there, a lot of exciting things going on, um, a lot of staff, I'm sure. So during this pandemic, how have you been able to motivate and inspire your team members, especially those that might be working from home right now? Yeah, that's a, it's been a real change for us. Um, you know, you have to keep in mind, one of the things I've done for my entire career is to separate home and work. So even when I was in public accounting, working 70, 80 hour weeks, we did not, I did not take work home. And so this whole pandemic has put that in a challenge for me. And so just personally, that's been a real challenge. Uh, but what we've done is, is uh, you know, to motivate our employees, the thing that we've really identified is that they're only hearing one part of the story, right? And it's all negative. Everywhere you turn, it's all about fear. It's all about what's going on and what could happen and what, what might happen. And in fact, there's no truth to any of it, right? We, we know that we don't know the whole truth. So everything is right, but everything could be wrong. And so that's been our challenge. So for us, we've been taking advantage of, we have a studio downstairs. And so we will do video messages as we need and, and broadcast. And, and in those messages, I try to make sure there's two things done. First is be transparent. Where are we in all of this and how is it affecting us? And then the second is to share the positive stories that have come out of COVID. And there's a ton. And we have, especially in our business, where we're working with churches across the United States, we're hearing those stories. Uh, for instance, the, a church in South Carolina that was approached by a hospital system and said, hey, would you open your daycare and take care of our, the kids of our hospital workers so we can stay engaged? And our church said, of course, right? And so wow. they cleaned out the facility and the amount of time and effort they do to make sure that those kids are taken care of and their cleansing protocols are in place and all that. I mean, that's just, that's the church acting, right? Wow. And mm. uh, it's just amazing. He, the other one for me is one of my staff, his parents, he grew up in the mission field. His parents uh, were in Thailand and they were there decades ago, right? Well, because of COVID, churches are live streaming they were able to live stream the church they founded over 40 years ago. And it was the first time they'd seen this church in decades. They're in their nineties. What a way to celebrate the fruit of what God is doing all because of COVID. And you know, you start hearing those kind of stories and you realize, wait a minute, it's not all about quarantine. It's not all about, there are a lot of good things going on. And I, I think that's what the world's missing today. I think that's one of the reasons why you have so much mental illness uh, or anxiety and depression, if you want to call it that. I wouldn't say illness, but mental health issues. I just think it's, they're not hearing positive and, and real truthful stories. I think that, you know, God is truth and, and we're missing a lot of that today. Yeah. Excellent. Absolutely. Um, Mark, what would you say um, are some personal development tools that you would recommend to upcoming leaders? <laughs> well, that's a, that's a tough one for me, Cameron, because I don't like tools. So <laughs> you're already pushing my button. Uh, I will tell you the, the biggest thing for development is one-on-one, -on -one. whether it be coaching, whether it be just go to the old fashioned lunch, right? And go out and have lunch with you. The biggest development I get is when I'm sitting across the table from someone having food because food causes you to, to become less formal, right? So it puts your guard down. And you begin to have those conversations. You begin to talk about, well, how are you doing this? And what are you doing? And the greatest development for me has always been around lunch. Mm -hmm. I don't do dinners because it impacts my family. I don't do breakfast because it impacts my devotions. But lunch, I'm, every day of the week, I'm having lunch with someone. And that's the development tool. And so now that we're coming out of this quarantine time, that to me is the biggest, biggest way. You, you pause, you listen, you, you can hear it honestly. It's just such a better deal than, than watching broad broadcasts, watching, you know, I'm a CPA, so I get a ton of education online. And it's, you know, I, I have ADHD, you know, so I, it doesn't go well. For 30-minute session, 
I'm not going to remember much of that. But <laughs> one-on-one with somebody, that's a good one. Absolutely. <laughs> that's awesome. I, I love that, Mark. Uh, I think uh, a, several of us from our generation suffer from that same thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, thank you. I, I love you said that God is truth and how we've got to, especially as the body of Christ. I mean, we have to refocus on the fact that God is truth and, and that truth is, is exponentially displayed in the power right. of the gospel. Yep. Um, and then, of course, the one-on-one reminds me of Jesus's method of discipleship, really that one-on-one discipleship. So I love it and I appreciate it. So my question, Mark, is a little bit of a twofold. Um, and we've all had to do some shifting during this time um, as to what we call normal uh, or the normal experience. And my question, my first part of the question for you is, um, what experience has been the most humbling for you during this time? And then the second half of that is, how do you feel what you learned was beneficial for you and your family? That's a great question, because I've been trying to reflect on on that over the last couple of weeks too. Just what have I learned through this? I had a board meeting two weeks ago and they, they asked me that question. They said, what are you learning in all of this? What's brotherhood gonna do differently? But uh, I, I think it's a personal issue as well. And so I'm really glad you asked it in that way. For me, the thing that's really been transformative is the fact that trying to navigate this working from home and then working back in the office, right? And that's a, that, while that sounds so simple, it's not. And we have over 500 employees. So we have 500 employees, plus their spouses, plus their kids, plus their extended families, plus their churches, plus, I mean, you're talking about thousands of people that I, as a leader of this organization, is maybe putting at risk to pick up a disease that could kill them, right? A virus that could kill them, or it may not. But not knowing truth makes that so incredibly difficult that I, I would say, if nothing else, I've been learning to listen with grace. And I think that's the thing that's really caught me is that I don't know what's in their family line. I don't know what's in their household. I don't know those things. But just because I don't know it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And so I have to be listening with grace. I have to try to look at it from their eyes, try to recognize it, that they have a perspective that I may not have, but that doesn't make theirs wrong and mine right or vice versa. And, uh, and so doing that, I, I think it's gone the same way with my kids as, as we've been dealing mostly electronically because my kids are all in big cities across the country. Okay. So we have to Zoom to talk to each other and, or FaceTime and, and doing that. That grace also causes me to listen more carefully, right? So when you ask, hey, how you doing? I'm not, yeah, good, keep going. It, it, you're actually listening. How, how quickly did they raise that thumb? What, what's really going on? And you listen to that conversation to see if you can figure out what's going on. And so I, I think that for me, this has really changed that. I'm a, I'm a fast paced guy. I move quickly, conversation, conversation. For instance, I can't stand Zoom meetings because I have to be polite, right? right. When somebody's given, they're telling me their thoughts, I've already caught it, I'm ready to go on. I have to wait for them to finish. And it's brutally exhausting, right? To wait for them to finish the topic, I already know. And some people say it three times. And, and so it's that difference, right? Now it's forcing me to listen with grace, to, to yeah. relax and allow the full listening to take place instead of listening so I can move to the next section. So, mm. I love that, Mark. You know, one of the things that uh, in my years of professional coach um, training is we call it that uh, grace space, just mm-hmm. holding that space uh, for there to be grace to right. just really uh, interact. So thank you. Great, yeah. great answer. Thanks, Mark. No, Jim, I, back I, to you, buddy. Yeah, I love I love that response. It's uh, go through that. I don't think I think as quite as quickly as you do, Mark. But uh, you can be on Zoom meetings and you catch it, and then your brain's already way ahead. And then all of a sudden, somebody mentions your name, and then you're yeah, gone. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so here, here's a question, and I think I already know where you're, where you're going to go possibly with this. But what would you identify as your personal values, and then how do those values shape your personal leadership style? Yeah, I, you know, I, when I was in uh, right out of college working at ENY, Ernst & Young, I had a manager that would tell me to go do stuff, and, but I would say, well, why would we do that? And there would be no answer, just because I said so. And uh, I, I learned early on, that is not how you manage people. So I, I adopted a mantra of, of transparency and passion. And if I don't have both of those things, I delegate it off. It's not worth it. You know, that's somebody else's role because it's not fair to whoever I'm working with. If I don't have the passion for it, why am I wasting your time on it? Because I feel like I'm wasting my time on it 
in essence, right? I mean, there are times you have to do the, the grunt work, but my goodness, if you can't be all in, why are you doing it? And, that, and that's, that's for me. And then the transparency. I, I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. Uh, you know, the, the most dangerous times in our company are all employee meetings. And that's when all our attorneys sit around and wait for me because I do open Q&A and I answer every question. And they're nervous of what that answer might be because I'm going to tell them honestly. But I, I think that's what we deserve, isn't it? If, if we can yeah. be transparent and if we have passion for what we do, we all enjoy life yeah. and enjoy the, the process so much better. So that's, that's, really, that's really where I'm at. I love that. Thank you. Awesome. Well, you said, Mark, that you are not a breakfast person. Well, you are, but that's your devotional time and dinner right. with your family. So our only best option is lunch. So this question, Good. the staple within our, within our high five, is who would you invite for you to join for you to lunch, but one person at this table that you're inviting has to make you laugh? Who would you choose? How big's my table? <laughs> i'll give you four people okay well wow. well you have to say jesus okay. and i would like but you know, the reality is he's there anyway right I'm whether i invite that's him or not right. so i'm not yes. sure that's a, that's a fair answer <laughs> um you know there's a few people that i i pay attention to jim collins is one of those guys okay. that i just i love i don't know that jim comes up with a lot of unique things on his own but his research shares stuff and i think that's what i like about jim is that he holds his own opinions to his chest, but he shares what the research has shown and then tries to interpret that, but allows us to do it with him. And I think Jim would be incredible to have, to be able to do some Q&A with. Awesome. Um, Craig Rochelle is one of our customers out at Life Church, and, oh, fantastic. and I've, had, I've had a chance to have lunch with Craig before, and he's just phenomenal and being able to pick his brain. But I'll tell you, it's interesting, because when, when you have lunch with those guys, mm -hmm. they're so busy, mm. right? They're not looking for me to pick their brain. They're looking for a bit of downtime. Yes. And, uh, and I, I, I just appreciate that fact, too, that we can let them come have lunch with us. We're not going to tear you up on that. But mm -hmm. Craig's mind is constantly running, Ooh. so I'd love to do that. Let's see. Who else would I pick? Um, the one that would make me laugh is Michael J. We've okay. had him in our building a few times. He's, he actually, on one of his CDs, has a comment that came out of our building. And so it was sort of interesting. He's turned it into a joke that he uses across the country. So, uh, but he's just funny. He's just a great guy and he's got a very purposeful laughter. And that's mm -hmm. what I like about Michael J. Um, last, let's see, who would I pick? You know, I, my brother, Wayne, I still spend a lot of time with Wayne. He's, he's sort of my executive coach and vice versa. And so I'd always want him at the table with me. And, and I have, you know, I have eight siblings, so I have plenty to pick from, but <laughs> Wayne's CPA, and so we, we really do tie ourselves together pretty well that way. Awesome. Well, that is a great table. Um, <laughs> I, I'm upset that our time is coming to an end. I really am because <laughs> I always enjoy our conversations. Um, I really yeah. do. I enjoy just, and I'm dare say, use the phrase, pick your brain. I just enjoy just <laughs> listening to what people have to say and what leaders in our area have to say and how they manage and how everyone is is very different, but they have one common goal is making sure that everyone is accountable, staying on task and yet enjoying yeah. what they're doing. So I sincerely do appreciate that. Okay, um, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, gentlemen, this is the time where we have to say goodbye. And this is also time where I have to educate people how to count down. So <laughs> only me. Only, don't blame anybody else. Just me. <laughs> it's either down or it's up, man. Let me know. It's You're making down. me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> it's going down so here we go and in three two one high five high five <laughs> perfect <laughs>